In the beginning, they were just a pair of eyes, a window into a world which had previously been unexplorable. These days, the remotely operated vehicles or ROVs working in Sellafield's legacy ponds are far more than a surveillance tool. They have become our hands in a world where humans can't go. The ethos when the ROV program started at the turn of the millennium was to start small, using off-the-shelf machines readily available in the oil and gas industry. As confidence in their ability grew, they started to do more, extending boom cameras into hidden corners, taking samples, attaching slings and hooks so skips could be hoisted into position. Well, the penny dropped and it took quite a while. I think it was in 2010, 2011, that we come up with the idea, why don't we just strap a small manipulator onto the observation machine and, and, and attempt to pick some fuel elements up from within the pond. Um, within six months of receiving the funding, we had actually designed, developed and launched and picked up the first fuel rod in the world. Tons and tons of fuel rods have now been picked up one by one by these miraculous machines. They've also helped place the equipment now pumping sludge out of the first generation Magnox storage pond, all because Sellafield and the nuclear supply chain took a punt which paid off. The first one we, um, we put in at risk, um, it was £8,000, it was worth doing. We didn't do any experiments at all, we put it into the pond and tried it. And since then we've learned to take that risk, because at the end of the day, if it fails, we've just lost the machine and we'll recover from it in a matter of hours. Being in a partnership really with two suppliers, there's uh, James Fisher Nuclear Egremont and there's Rovtech at Barrow, both local companies, and they've helped us with this journey, they've helped us to develop the machines. We SL know the problems, but we don't quite know about this technology. It's new to the nuclear industry. The ROV control room is a place for concentration. Manoeuvring the machines, measuring the fuel rods and placing fuel in skips ready to be exported out of the pond requires trained nuclear professionals. As well as using expertise from the supply chain, Sellafield is now building capacity and investing in its own people to help deliver this mission for the future through a partnership approach with the supply chain. I think the end goal is to have all of the retrievals operators trained to be able to fly ROVs as and when required. We started off with two operators that we trained um, and then we're slowly ramping up where we're going to try and get three operators per shift. Training packages have been developed for each of the four types of ROVs now being used here. A test facility on the main Sellafield site allows operators to practice flying the machines well away from radioactive hazards. This is the latest model now being used, the V8. It's the most powerful yet and can pitch and roll in a way which gets into places other ROVs can't reach. They are Meccano sets that you buy in and you can assemble. Yeah, there's a bit of tweaking to adapt them to the environment and everything. But they are, if you looked in the North Sea, you would see similar machines. And so you're paying a commercial price for these, not a nuclear bespoke design price. Technology first used in space exploration has made the machines more robust and resistant to radiation, a good thing for Sellafield. And the learning flows both ways. The protective coatings used here to shield the machines from the strong alkaline pond water are now being used by the US Navy to protect their ROVs from the salty sea. Our operators probably never dreamt a job at Sellafield would mean flying submarines, but there's a clear sense of achievement from those that do it. The satisfaction, it's, it's, it's a great job to have. You know, I'm, I'm flying ROVs around a, around a, a building. You know, it, everything's different. Every day is a different day. You don't know what you're going to uncover. You know, you, you work, you develop. The ROVs have massively exceeded everyone's expectations and there's potential to do even more. I can see it being moved out to some of the other areas on the Magnox sites potentially. And, and then if you look wider, further afield, you see the expertise that's being developed over here being taken over to places like Fukushima. Most importantly of all, they're also proving to be the safest way of doing the work. One machine typically takes a radioactive dose of 20 sieverts a year, more than five times the level of the entire Sellafield workforce combined. 
So some of the activities that we are undertaking now with ROVs would have traditionally been labour intensive and in some instances we've seen 95% dose reduction for the same tasks. If you go back the 16 years when we had one vehicle which was just doing survey work to now we've got probably a fleet of maybe 8 to 10 vehicles running constantly, well, 12 hours a day in the pond. You know, I think um, the expectation now and the, and the confidence that people have in ROVs because they're, they're doing the work, we're moving fuel, we're, we're surveying places and facilities which have never been seen before. You know, vehicles is the way forward and it's, it's keeping people's doors down. People talk about decommissioning mindset, they talk about pragmatic engineering, they talk about smart, starting small and build confidence builds, expanding capability. Well, this is it in action.